A blade is like a tea leaf. Only those who sample it many times can appreciate its true qualities. Dance. Time to work. My apologies. Ha <laughs> 
Today is a lucky day. Visit treasures. Yes, this seems suitably sophisticated. Today is a lucky day. My apologies! You must be tired. You should rest and take some water. What's the situation? Hmm? Who's this? Unfortunately, somebody who's too young to take on the role of Isak's grandfather. Nevertheless, he's one of the people we're trying to find. So... At one point in time, 
The abandoned Elazar Hospital served as the Academia site for extracting Divine Kant knowledge. Yep, pretty much. Their plan must have been implemented at some point before we arrived at Aru Village, since Divine Kant knowledge has been in circulation for a while now. Yet, they fled once we were headed to the village, almost as if they knew we were on their trail. Why is that? We may have a mole in our midst. One of us could be secretly revealing our whereabouts to the Academia. Huh? Are our friendships that shallow? <sighs> Looks like none of you have realized wherein lies the issue. Sino, you're the reason why they can predict our movements. Choose your next words very carefully. It is simply a logical inference. I have my reasons. So what you're saying is... Sino's the mole. Interesting. And here I thought you were the most suspicious one, I'll hate them, since you were always acting alone. I know. You have a point. But I realized something as we were returning from the hospital. Sino isn't like any of us. What are you trying to say? Do you still remember who you are, General Mahamatra? <laughs> As a Matra, you are no doubt privy to certain kinds of information. Before you can take action against someone, you are required to have all the facts available, including the less than savory details. Simply put, the Academia has traditionally allowed you access to a wealth of sensitive information. Knowing their modus operandi, wouldn't you expect them to take precautions against you? If you want to raise a vicious wolf, you need to make sure that you can avoid its bite. The Academia is monitoring me? It's not that simple. The Academia has eyes all over Sumeru, but they have a special protocol for dealing with you. Every so often comes a Nyagarbaha day. On this day, the Academia enters new information into the Akasha through knowledge capsules. I remember seeing a thick notebook next to the control panel once. Its contents were all about the General Mahamatra, his activities throughout the day, preferred methods of enacting judgment, everything. You're saying that the Academia entered my information into the Akasha too? But what's the point in doing that? My actions aren't important enough to be added into the Akasha. The Akasha is capable of computation. <sighs> the Akasha's algorithms are entirely capable of predicting your movements using the data entered. When you would depart, the route you would follow, your destination. It knew all of this. It predicted my every move. The Academia has been watching you longer than you think. However, the fact that you resigned is proof that their suspicions were well-founded. So that's how it is. Sino adheres to his principles so strongly that he's actually a thorn in their side. Tenacity of will and steadfast faith are worthless to the Academia. They need scholars who are easily pliable and mindlessly go after anything they can profit from. Sino, don't take it to heart. This just proves how much of a trustworthy ally you are. <sighs> they escaped because of me. Don't blame yourself. It's not like any of us would have known. I have an idea. If they predicted my movements, then I might be able to guess where they went. Whoa, you bounced back fast. There is always an opportunity for safety after danger passes. Oh, so that's how it is! Paimon gets it now! If the Academia is trying to avoid Sino, then the safest place would be... Yep, that's right! They'll want to proceed in the direction opposite of where I'm going.
I must go. There's also something I want to investigate. Let's go, guys! After him! Please, wait! I want to go, too! Hmm... You want to go, too? If so... You have to promise you'll stay safe. I want to find Grandpa. I promise I'll be careful and not cause any trouble. Everyone, I leave him in your hands. Yay! Let's go! Remember to pack some food with you. Paimon feels like we're missing someone, though. Hmm. Yes. After leaving the village, we should head straight toward the desert. I know the desert like the back of my hand. Is that because you play here a lot? Yep. One time, Grandpa almost got lost in the desert. But I was the one who brought him back. There's something here. What's this? It's buried in the sand. Hmm. Looks like we'll need to roll up our sleeves and do some work. Ugh. If I meant that running around everywhere was already enough work. Okay, okay. So, we have to dig it out? Whatever's down there, looks like it's buried really deep. These are likely fragments of an Academia-developed device, something akin to a headset. Looks like there were more than one village keeper. They must have been escorted this way, because there are device fragments scattered around here. Let's split up and search the area. Chances are that we'll find other things nearby. Is this what we're searching for? It looks kind of scary. This is definitely a device used to extract divine knowledge. How did it end up buried in the sand? That can't have been part of the plan. They must have been attacked along the way. Wait, what? Grandpa, I hope you're okay. Don't worry, your grandpa's gonna be fine. Razak didn't display any signs of starvation or dehydration which means that they left fairly recently. We should be able to catch up. One more thing. Given that the device had been entirely covered by sand, I believe the attack must have happened prior to the sandstorm. Let's keep going. They can't have gone far. But you're flying, aren't you, Paimon? Is flying over sand tiring, too? Ugh, of course it is! <gasps> Voices, over there. It sounds like an argument. You have really good ears! Don't get any closer. They'll notice us. Dia's talking with the Aramites? Hm. Very interesting. Let's listen in. If you had informed me sooner, there'd be plenty of room for us to... You're one of us. We would never lie. 
scholars. You don't know as much as I do. Need me to... <laughs> I knew it. That's our deal. Tia? Why would you... Tia! Hey! What are you doing? Huh? Didn't you say you'd help me find Grandpa? What? Why are you on their side? <laughs> well, look who's here. Ain't that something? Ugh, this complicates things. You've betrayed Aru Village? So, this is the great General Mahamatra. <laughs> Dear, you'd be better off as my assistant than hanging around with this motley crew. Seen for yourself, I have the means and methods and my ideals are far more admirable than theirs. I'm not the type that's easily swayed, Raman. You of all people should know that. Wait, what's going on, Dia? Whose side are you on here? Shut it, Paimon. It doesn't matter. Whichever side you pick, nothing can deter us from the grand mission of resurrecting King Deshret. Once our Lord of Old returns to this land, we will have a new beginning. Face the facts, Raman. It's not gonna happen. You should understand that more than anyone. Have all your years as a merc taught you nothing about placing hopes in a ruler? I'm a desert dweller and a proud follower of King Deshret. Whether I live by the edge of the sword or in peaceful comfort, my soul will always carry this conviction. It's not too late yet. The village keep... <clears throat> mad scholars aren't gonna bring King Deshret back to life. You don't understand, my dear lady. Pursuing our faith is our purpose in life. Even if the chance of success is one in a million, we must be willing to give everything we have. Even if it'll expose you to the Academia? Even if they end up disbanding the Aramites? Your Aramites, which you've worked so hard for all these years? Yes. <sighs> We've waited a long time for this day to come. The sun and the moon no longer shine here. All you see now is cracks in this desiccated land. But fate has finally dealt me a hand to play against the Academia. With these scholars in our custody, we'll stomp the Academia's forces and fight our way beyond the wall of Samuel. <sighs> Ridiculous. Think about it. The Academia controls the entirety of Sumeru. Your powers are negligible in comparison. If you still don't believe me, then try asking these two men. They're also against the Academia, but neither of them are as arrogant as you are. <laughs> they look more like pawns of the Academia to me. Why would I listen to anything the people of Greater Lord Ruka Devada have to say? Filthy traitors. Your god abandoned all honor and betrayed King Deshret. We desert dwellers will never trust the likes of you. It's impossible to communicate with someone so hostile. Perhaps we should. Do you really believe that by kidnapping the scholars, you'll be able to negotiate with the academia? These people have no value as bargaining chips. But I could be persuaded to take their place as your next hostage. These scholars were exiled from the Academia. I, on the other hand, am their current scribe, and will be a much greater asset to you. Wait, you can't be serious. So, you want to trade places with the hostages, do you? Precisely. Any wise person would gladly accept my offer. What are you thinking? What if they decide to kill you instead? Well, that would be bad luck for me. However, I'd get the chance to observe the scholars, perhaps even find out the truth. <sighs> Think you can talk me over with that confident look of yours? I'm not trying to persuade you. I'm using this as a means of joining forces against the Academia. You are the scribe. What do you have against the Academia? Not all desert dwellers believe in King Deshret. And the same applies to the Academia. Why must all knowledge seekers approve of the Academia's way of doing things? 
<laughs> you academia scum. Every last one of you is nothing but a hypocrite, just like everyone else on the other side of that wall. I've made myself clear enough. I won't listen to another word from the Dendro Archon's people. Not so fast. I'll hate them. Do you stand by everything you just said? <laughs> I never make empty promises. You know you're making a dangerous decision, right? I do. Good. Raman, hear me out. These people are my friends. Maybe you can't take the followers of the Dendro Archon at their word, but what about me? Do you trust me? We've known each other for years. Of course I do. In that case, I'm willing to vouch for their honesty with my right arm. Uh, <sighs> Come on, Raman, don't be a coward. If you're serious about taking on the Academia, you need to steal yourself. You can't be afraid. <laughs> An arm from the Flame Mane. You've piqued my interest. But what if you refuse to oblige? What should I do then? No one's a fool here, Dia. We're mercs. The mercs don't tend to live long unless they have their wits about them. You're not wrong, but this is different. I promised my friends that we'd bring back the village keepers together. <laughs> Let's do it right here then! Give me your right arm as proof of your resolve. Uh. Don't listen to him! He's not even trying to negotiate! He just wants to make things more difficult! That's fine. Are you crazy? We came here to save lives. One arm for that many people is still a pretty good deal, if you ask me. Raman, I'm holding up my end of the deal here. You'd better not let me down. Sure. Go ahead and cut off her right arm. You don't have to go this far. That's not for you to decide. Do it! Dia, run! <laughs> Stop! What's wrong? Can't do it? Flame Mane, you and I are both desert folk. Cutting off your arm is no different than cutting off my own fingers. Where's the sense in cutting my own kin to pieces? <sighs> You've shown me that you're serious. Go on now, take your friends and leave. Meet me in the desert at noon tomorrow. I was really counting on him not going through with it. Dia! That was crazy! Have you all lost your minds? What if he'd actually cut your arm off? Hmm, then I'd just have to hold my claymore with my left arm. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. But sometimes when you're out on a limb, you gotta double down to seal the deal, you know? Don't ever make a promise like that again. I can deal with the likes of them. If it came down to it, you would not lose to them either. I don't doubt it, Sino. But this is about more than me and them. There's a lot more where they came from. Even if we got rid of one bunch of radicals, there are others out there. Wiping them out would do more harm than good. <sighs> As you wish. I'm sorry, Dia. I should have stayed put and listened. I should have trusted you. It's okay. I promised you I'd help find your grandpa, so I'll do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes? <laughs> you just might be scholar material. 
Huh? Are you serious? The Eremites once said that I was a lunatic. Perhaps a little madness is essential to be successful in research. Why does it feel like he's using his praise for me as an excuse to brag about himself? Okay, let's get moving. We should head back to the village and rest up. Today was just a trial run. Noon tomorrow is gonna be the hard part. Looks like we have everyone here. Isak, are you sure you want to come with us? I'll watch from a safe distance. Dia, I want to be there to bring Grandpa home. Okay, let's go then. Dia, wait. What's the matter? I heard that you were quite reckless yesterday. No more of that today, understood? I'll be very upset with you. <sighs> Fine. We may leave at any time. They got here before us. Uh-oh. Is it because Paimon overslept by five minutes and held everyone up? Is everything ready? Absolutely. Although... You brought fewer people than I imagined. 
Bring him over. Grandpa! Why is there only one of them? Brahman, I've always thought of you as a man of his word. What's this about? It's a one-for-one -one exchange. Sounds fair, don't you think? Well, let me put it this way. Agreeing to any kind of deal with the Dendro Archon's people is already a huge compromise on my part. Don't you think you've asked enough? Uh-uh. <sighs> you stay right there! shaking. Wait a second. It's a earthquake. This day's going just great. <laughs> what a nuisance. The sand dune collapsed. I saw an energy field. The village keeper protected us. It glowed green with Dentro. <laughs> just like you said, it may well have been the remains of Lesser Lord Kusanali's power inside the scholar's body. The Dentro Archon. The present one. Grandpa? Grandpa? Oh no. He's getting confused again. Hey, look around you. Did there used to be a temple here? It seems that when the sand dune collapsed, it exposed these underground structures. The symbols on the gate belong to King Deshret's civilization. This structure must be ancient. Over time, the sandstorms completely buried it and left it in the state we see now. It could have been an underground palace in the distant past. Oh, a miracle. Praise King Deshret! What's he doing here? And his men too? They must have fallen down here with us. Pretty lucky, if you ask me. Most of them seem in really bad shape. Except for him. He got off lightly. <laughs> Mind your head. No, no, this isn't the time for conflict. Our exalted lord has shown us the way to his sacred palace. Uh, he's not actually gonna go in there, is he? As it happens, I want to take a look inside, too. What are you doing? Don't you think it's curious? One minute, Lesser Lord Kusanali's power protects us from harm, and the next, remnants of King Deshret's civilization appear. Two major deities are vying to showcase their power to us. It would be a shame not to witness them both. Paimon thought you weren't interested in gods. Indeed. In my view, gods are just a higher form of living being. Or creature, you could say. New discoveries are always worth investigating. Whether they have anything to do with gods is neither here nor there. Raman, what are you gonna do about your men? I'll just let them lay here. King Deshret will take care of his people. Right now, I'm going inside.
It's full of life here. This defies comprehension. It looked completely desolate from the outside. Yet, it flows with energy inside. Yeah! And there's so many plants. It's so pretty! Sir Ramon. W huh? Me? <laughs> do you see another Ramon here? Are you mocking me? What do you mean, sir? Interpret it however you want. But there's something I'd like to draw your attention to. While this structure is clearly left over from King Deshret's civilization, the energy that flows in here is that of the Dendro Archon. <sighs> Whatever you say. It's not like I have a vision. There's nothing to be angry about. Think of this as an academic journey. It does seem kind of strange. If that's true, then we might have to explore this whole area to find an explanation.
the show begins. Coming so to art. Sumetsu! Let's dance! Take flight! The show be my apologies. Yeah, embrace the ice. Positions. Whirling snow.
A blade embraces its duty. Now that's a sight to see. King Desret's splendor surrounds us. There's so much vegetation here. It's different than what I expected. Sure are a lot of plants for a desert. <laughs> that's what I call divine providence of King Desret. Wait, what's that? A load of flowers, and it looks like there's something among them. These are King Desret runes. They left something behind. Hmm. Yes, it's an elegy written in an ancient script. What does it say? Here lies our faithful priest, Kasala. His wisdom is a miracle among the people, deserving of high praise and admiration. You can read ancient King Deshret script? Of course. Every student needs to master at least 20 languages before they graduate. He's not serious, right? There's still something off about this place. The elemental energy here is too concentrated. The scent of life. Is it trying to tell us something? Hmm. Is this it? Analyzing. Hmm. 
There seems to be a hidden message among these skeletal remains. Excellent. There's a device from King Deshret's civilization in this gravesite. I'll transmit the information over and project it for everyone to see. Isn't sharing knowledge against the Academia's rules? Yes. However, under the circumstances, I'd prefer you to see this for yourself. You'll understand after watching it. Civilization is born of knowledge, but so too can knowledge be its demise. A disaster caught us unaware. It was knowledge that did not belong to this world. King Deshret brought this forbidden knowledge into our world, and it quickly spread like a plague. People's minds were filled with crazed whispers, Dark gray scales spread across their bodies. Even the land was stripped of its vigor. Only a desperate, deathly silence remained. Were it not for greater Lord Ruka Devata from the forests, the damage would have been irreversible. She summoned the priests to build temples and infused into them the divine power of life. The disaster was miraculously tempered, and the embers of our civilization were preserved in Aru village. Alas, the miracle could not last. As long as forbidden knowledge continued to exist, it would forever blight this world. In the end, the proud king of the desert, my eternal lord, chose to sacrifice himself. I have spent my whole life since guarding one of these many temples. But now, my duty is coming to an end. As I close my eyes for the final time, the sight of that noble deity will appear in my vision once more. In helping King Deshret to eradicate forbidden knowledge, she exhausted her strength, and her form became that of a small child. How strange. Now that I think of her, I no longer have any fear of death, for I sense that the spirit of life will abide with me during my eternal sleep. Children of the desert, Cling no longer to past grievances, but hold tight to the memory of this act of benevolence. What was that? The priest's memories. No. No! Impossible! Greater Lord Ruka Devata. So the former Dendro Archon and King Deshret were never enemies at all. Uh, but this doesn't make any sense. The Dendro Archon's followers, they're clearly... Was that the former Dendro Archon? She became so tiny in the end. You might be distrustful of the Akasha, but there's no reason for you to doubt King Deshred's technology. You've just witnessed his priest's last words. I've never heard about any of this before. The surviving followers of King Deshret all gathered in Aru village. Our god did not make mistakes. We refuse to believe any of the rumors. King Deshret's death the all but total annihilation of our civilization. It was all Greater Lord Ruka Devata's doing. We saw her as nothing more than a traitor. Who stabbed us in the back in our moment of crisis. <laughs> Just like us humans. Fighting, feuding, double-crossing each other to survive in the desert. 
You were blinded by your prejudice. <laughs> if I hadn't seen this for myself, if I hadn't witnessed his last words with my own eyes, ears, and heart, how could I ever begin to accept this? The truth is so far from what I've always known. Am I really supposed to believe that after all these years, all this time seeking revenge, suddenly now my enemy is my savior? Raman, that's enough. Give it a rest. You're starting to make a fool of yourself. <laughs> Dia, tell me. My Aramites and I, what are we even fighting for? Hey, how you doing? Eh, I'll live. <laughs> Thanks. I should probably go. Can't just stay here forever. What's your next move gonna be? Oh, I know what you're going to ask. I feel deeply ashamed of everything I've done. You'll get everything you're asking for. But please, uh, give me some time. After everything that's happened here today, somehow I need to explain it to the others. It's not gonna be easy. Well, I guess that's for me to deal with. Dia, uh, this is where our camp's located. Make a note of it. When would be a good time for us to go? Tomorrow. I'll convince everyone that we're all on the same side. And I'll return every last one of your mad, uh, sorry, your village keepers. We'll share our other resources with you, too. You seem to finally understand that our true enemy is the Sages. Yes. The gods never gave up on anyone. It's the people responsible for all this that need to face the consequences of their actions. That must have been rough. But he seems to have figured things out now. <sighs> Rahman's no fool. Being the leader of your own faction in the desert is no easy feat. It's too bad he was held back by his belief in King Deshred. But now that that's changed, I guess we have a few more people on our side. The outcome, at least, is favorable. We should get going, too. Let's head back, have a proper meal, and a nice... Uh, long sleep. We'll need all our energy tomorrow. Hmm. Sino, we're leaving! Stop yelling.
I shall treasure this good fortune. Today is a lucky day. Hmm. I 
Things are going a little too smoothly today. Today is a lucky day. Raman, we're here. Everything's been arranged. Someone will bring the village keepers back to Aru village shortly. I guess all I can say now is, thanks for agreeing to help. Ah, don't mention it. I think we can both agree you went to hell and back for it. But we share a common cause now. From here on out, we're allies. Where are the perpetrators? I'll bring you to them. Follow me. So these are the people who kidnapped the village keepers. Oh no, it's the scribe! There's no need to yell. No one can help you now. We've been all over the desert trying to find you! That's right. General Mahamatra? No, no! Make it quick, please! Swift and painless! Whoa! The moment they set eyes on Sino, they turn pale like they've seen a ghost! You should have known that I would be coming for you. Wait, we were just following orders! You know what I'm talking about, right? There's no way we could have done all this by ourselves! No, not Sino! He's gonna tear us limb from limb! I could do worse. Please have mercy! Start talking. Otherwise, I'll have to resort to other methods. So, your superiors have kept you quite busy recently. Why? What are they trying to accomplish? Uh, they, um, wanted to extract canned knowledge. Don't play dumb. You know what I'm really asking. They extract divine canned knowledge. Then what? I, I, I don't really don't know how to explain it. Well, you better start talking or you'll be sorry! You don't want to make things any more difficult for yourself, do ya? Be my guest. Huh? Huh? Uh-huh. That sure didn't sound like a fancy metaphor or anything. You're serious, aren't you? How did you know? There's no use hiding it now. Yes, you're right. 
The academia is working on an important and potentially world-changing project. They are creating a new god, a god that will belong to them and to the people of Sumeru. It may seem as if Sumeru's academics are thriving, but ever since the death of Greater Lord Ruka Devata, scholarly breakthroughs have been few and far between. The withering of Ermin's soul has been getting worse recently. The sages have tried everything they could think of, but nothing's worked. I'm always hearing them say things like, if only Greater Lord Ruka Devata was still with us. Continue. And then, someone from the Fatui showed up. They called him the Doctor. He brought a, a, a gnosis and said he wanted to borrow the Academia's research facilities. The doctor was previously expelled from the Academia. At first, the sages looked down at him in disdain. But when he said those words, everyone's expression changed. He asked them, do you wish to create a god? This is what the arrogant ignorance at the extreme end of Academia looks like. First... The Academia spent a long time constructing a divine vessel, which was based on an exquisite humanoid puppet. After that, they harvested dreams via the Seb Zerus Festival Samsara, maximizing the Akasha's output. With the Doctor's help, and the Akasha now functioning at maximum efficiency, they were able to use it to extract the power from the Gnosis and convert it into a divine core. Next, they decided that their new god needed to possess divine wisdom. For that to happen, they needed a huge quantity of divine canned knowledge. It adds up. But how do you determine whether the knowledge extracted is of divine origin? Call it an educated guess? The Academia has been trying to figure out the exact source of the Scholar's Madness for centuries, but to no avail. Nobody can explain the cause of this phenomenon. Uh, surely you can see what that implies, Scribe Al-Haytham. If it's knowledge no mortal can comprehend, then it must be something only gods are able to decipher. In other words, it's the source of the God of Wisdom's omniscience and omnipotence. Hmm. You must have noticed by now. The Academia doesn't care about who their God is. It's the ability to exercise control over knowledge and wisdom that matters. It is as if they are cursed with a desire for omniscience and omnipotence that burns in their blood. Some organisms demonstrate phototaxis, and thus orient their entire lives in respect to sources of light. For the sages, their only source of hope is the existence of a deity who embodies the acme of wisdom. This is but a form of phototaxis. For many scholars, the absence of a god of wisdom means stumbling in the darkness for the duration of their lives. Then what does Lesser Lord Kusanali mean to you? Is she not a true god present in this world? If you already have a new god, why try to create another one? From the beginning, the Academia has never treated her as a god. When the Academia first discovered Lesser Lord Kusanali, the newborn god of wisdom, the sages hoped that she would be as wise as Greater Lord Ruka Devata. But upon evaluation, they found that at the time, she possessed no more intelligence than any ordinary human child. The sages never had a ruder awakening. This forced them to accept that Greater Lord Ruka Devata had indeed passed away. Not to mention that Lesser Lord Kusanali's Gnosis had been used to power the Akasha this entire time. By herself, she has neither an Archon's raw power nor the spectacular insight expected of a god of wisdom. Slowly but surely, people began to forget about her existence. So... This is the path the sages have chosen. Alright, let's try to keep our cool. If everyone's in a bad mood, then let's change up our scenery. Raman? Give me a few men to help us escort the village keepers back to the village. And these two scholars, they're coming too. Sure. As you wish.
The village keepers you've found have all been returned to their homes, and each one has a dedicated caregiver to look after them. The two new scholars are being kept under close supervision, too. Really great work, everyone. Uh, the atmosphere is so heavy. Is there nothing left to talk about? In that case, let's all get some water and try to think about something else. Or I can go fetch some snacks. Oh, Paimon's so coming with you! Do you have any plans, Traveler? Gods above, you're not talking about work, are you? Hmm. So you were still withholding some information? this firsthand, it still feels super surreal to hear you talk about it again. What a whirlwind of a story. I felt like I was holding my breath the whole time. It seems like there will be more issues to face in the days ahead than I'd anticipated. Hmm. Still, now's a good time to make our next move. Now that Raman's joined us, we'll be an even stronger team. It's time to make a plan. Indeed. These events are a flagrant transgression of the rules in every sense. We cannot allow it to continue. So, everyone, are we on the same page? Crush the sages and rescue our god. That is our ultimate goal. Well, let's brainstorm a little more about what other resources we can draw on. The next time we gather here, we must have a solid plan. Yep, it'll work out for sure. <laughs> 